What's going on, everybody? This is your boy, Paul the Fifth, Fifth, and welcome to episode two of my M1 series render down test. Recently, I showed you some tests involving my Mac Mini, as well as my new M1 MacBook Pro. Today's video is all about showcasing the power of the M1 silicon chips. In the last episode, I showed you what the M1 and my laptop can really do. Today, I want to go a step further and do some tests involving my M1 laptop, the late 2015 MacBook Pro, and put these devices to the test. Here's what I want to do. Dive into Logic. I'll pull up a session with 128 tracks, all with reverb and delay sends to see if either device crashes. Then I want to take things a step further and do some multitasking. I want to bounce some files in Logic and render an iMovie at the same time to see which device, if either one, can handle it. Let's go ahead and dive into this. All right, here are the specs on my M1 laptop. To get these on any Mac computer, go to the little Apple symbol here and about this Mac. We have OS Big Sur 11.1. It's a 13 inch M1 2020 chip, Apple M1 memory, 16 gigs of RAM. And then this is the storage. I have out of one terabyte, I have 377 gigs available. And here's the specs for my late 2015 MacBook Pro. If you go to the Apple sign about this Mac, Mac OS Catalina version 10.15.7, we have a 2.7 gigahertz dual core Intel i5 processor memory 8 gigs of RAM and if we look at storage very minimal only 250 gigs available I have oh just updated 41 megs nothing at all all right let's go ahead and dive into our next test I have up here a session it's basically just a saxophone loop I found in the loop library. I've got it looped and I've got it sent to a bus and that's gonna have reverb and delay sent to it on the M1 MacBook Pro. And then I'm doing the same thing on the 2015 MacBook Pro. Let's try and get this loaded on the old computer. Earlier it crashed on me. Let's see if it does that again. All right. I've got this as a file saved as M1 versus 2015 MacBook Pro audio test. Wow, it didn't crash this time. I have on both sessions 128 tracks of this saxophone. So I want to pull up my CPU meter to see how taxing this might be on the processor. In Logic, we go to Logic Pro, Preferences, advanced tools make sure show advanced tools is enabled once that's done we go to view customize control bar and display and under lcd we want to change this to custom on the very bottom we want to make sure we have performance cpu hd checked we hit ok and we find that right up here we'll click that we'll move this performance meter up here to the top. On this session, we will take all of those. We'll highlight everything. Command R to repeat. X to pull up the mixer. All these going to bus one. I've got those going to a bus. I've got silver verb, which is a reverb. Let's go ahead and add a delay. I'll do stereo delay, stereo. Cool. We've got 128 tracks. It's a sample of back in the day saxophone. I've got everything on bus one, 
sent to an aux. It's got reverb and a stereo delay on that bus. I wanna see the difference between the M1 MacBook Pro and the 2015 MacBook Pro to see the difference on the same exact settings as far as the CPU usage. Let's go. Let's go back to the start. Less than 25% on the M1. Wow, very surprising. Let's change things up a bit. Instead of sending things to the bus, we'll turn the bus off and on audio effects, we'll add the reverb and delay as an insert, which is generally a big no-no. All right, we'll add reverb space on all 128 tracks. Right under that, we will add the stereo delay, delay. on the old MacBook Pro. Same thing. Add reverb space. Took a while, try to think. And then underneath that, we will add the stereo, stereo delay. delay. Back to the beginning. Let's see how this works out. And by the way, I have not tested this yet. I'm doing it real time. And this is my first time checking it out. So let's see. Hella noticeable difference. Not even 50% on the M1. Peaking at 75% on the old one. There, there you, go. you go. Awesome. Let's keep going. We're going to add another delay. delay. We'll do a, do sample, a sample delay, delay now. now on the M1. Same thing on the old MacBook Pro. We'll go down to delay, delay and, sample and sample delay, delay and, just and just stereo. stereo. Back to the beginning, and here we go. On the M1, 45%. The 2015. Peaking out at about 77%. All right, cool. Let's keep going. Let's go ahead and add another delay. This time this we'll time do, we'll a, do tape a tape delay. delay. Do the same thing over here. Delay, tape delay, stereo. Back to the beginning. Maybe 45 on the M1. Hitting a hundred percent at times on the old 2015 MacBook Pro. Okay, let's take it a step further. We'll go ahead and add another reverb right underneath this. We'll do inverb stereo. Same thing over here. We'll go down to reverb, inverb, stereo. Back to the beginning. Not even hitting 50% on the M1. Over here, the 2015 is peaking out at 100%. Cool. Let's keep going. Let's add another, another delay. delay. We'll go to an echo stereo. Same thing, delay, echo stereo. Back to the beginning. And let's see what happens. Not even three seconds in, this bitch couldn't handle it. I mean, that's a lot of processing that I'm putting on there, but <laughs> this is flipping amazing. Let's do it again. Back to the beginning. One, two, three. Three seconds. Cool. Let's do one more thing. So I just created 200 additional tracks. Let's dive into the mixer and we'll copy each one of these reverbs and delays as inserts onto these new tracks. And then we'll see how well the CPU performance is. All right. Space 
Sample delay. Sample delay. Tape delay. space design. And finally, we've got another echo stereo delay. Let's pull up our CPU meter. Going to the very bottom here. 328 tracks all with a combination of six to seven inserts of reverb and stereo delays. Let's see if this M1 can handle that. Here we go. It can, but it's peaking out at the 100%, but it's not crashing. We're clipping like hell, but I pretty much figured it could handle that, but I wasn't sure. It passed that test. Now that's just logic alone. So I want to get into some other sessions. We will bounce them down and render an iMovie at the same time to see how the performance goes. Let's jump into it. It is time to put these machines to the test. I'm gonna try and put them through the ringer. I'm gonna try and do three to four things simultaneously to see which one can handle everything if possible. So I'll be doing a screen recording with QuickTime Player running in the background. On both devices, I am going to be rendering some files in iMovie, bouncing a song in Logic. It's called Sundays. It's by a friend of mine called Cash Diamonds. It's a song that I mix for her. And on the M1, I'm doing an additional step. I am also currently filming this video with Photo Booth with a webcam. Let's see if I can get this all put together. We will start our QuickTime Player, new screen recording, go down here to record entire screen. Cool, got that going. So my plan is to get the iMovie rendering started first, then I plan to bounce the songs in Logic. Let's try it. The video on the 2015 MacBook Pro is a video I shot for a cache. It's relatively short. It's four minutes and 14 seconds in length. Total file size is 4.73 gigs. The video on the M1 MacBook Pro is called Christmas Came Early. I shot it on my birthday in December. It was me opening Christmas gifts. The video is 12 minutes in length and 6.81 gigs. Let's go ahead and render these down. Saving both to my documents. And throughout this entire process with everything else going on, I want to try and get some heat gauges from both devices. I also have my iPhone 12 Pro Max with the stopwatch ready to go. I'm gonna give it a five second lead way and then go and start to render down these film clips. One. Cool, those are going. Performance meter. Not bad, definitely a little more as expected on the 2015. Let's go to Logic. I'll start on this one here first. It's getting loud. About project or file. Yep. I'll start with this one here. Okay. Bouncing. 45 seconds in. This one's getting loud as hell. iMovie. 50%, this iMovie is only at 5%. Logic is almost done. This got 
three levels to go through. Okay, while all that's going on, let's get some heat tests. A minute and 30 in. Over here, we're about 85% on iMovie. Over here on this one, we're only at about 10%. This is getting loud. This is nice and cool still. Hardly anything going on. This is getting loud. Processing threads, hardly anything. Definitely more over here. This is getting extremely loud. Two minutes and 20 seconds in. We're almost done with that render in iMovie. Completely done at 222. This one is still going. We are just now at three o'clock. Both songs completely bounced down. Video still going, capturing me. This is loud as hell. Two minutes and 45 seconds in. Processing threads, hardly anything. Not much over here, but this is loud as hell. It's trying. Almost three minutes in, and we're just at about four o'clock. I want to start drinking. <laughs> Let's try another heat test. Three and a half minutes in, and this is only at five o'clock. Okay, we'll go to four minutes. This is loud, it's still thinking, it's trying. This one's done with everything. Okay, when we get to the four minute mark, I'm gonna stop. This is still trying to go. Damn it. 355, okay. This one's at like 50%. That was a little stressful, but I wanted you to see that this one handled everything just fine. Just, I'm cool, I'm calm, I'm collected. What else you got for me? This one is like struggling at 50%. Cool. Wow, so what did you think about that? I really wanted to show you how outdated this device is, in order to really appreciate not only the power, but the strength, the quietness, and the speed of the new M1s. Let me know what you thought about today's video. I appreciate you watching. If you're new, thank you so much for stopping by. Go ahead and give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed today's content. As always, smash that subscribe button and Hit that notification bell so that way you're always in the know what Paul V and Legacy Studios is up to. Again, thank you so much for watching. My name is Paul V.